Hello, second graders. I have another story we're gonna read today. It is called, This is My Neighborhood. So in social studies this year, we've been talking all about communities, and we know communities can be our school communities, it can be our church communities, it can even be our neighborhoods. So I wanted to read this book about our neighborhoods because a lot of us are at home now, and you're in your own neighborhood, so this is a perfect time to kind of explore the things around you that we normally don't pay attention to. Here we go. Chapter one, a neighbor needs help. There's the picture. Malik called my new neighbor. Buddy's run away and I'm so scared. Can you help me find him? Sure, Mrs. Z, I said. I know this neighborhood better than anybody. I'll tell my dad where I'm going and then I'll meet you out front. It says, a neighborhood is a group of people and buildings in one area. Neighborhoods are sometimes called communities. Ah, look at that. Dad and I met Mrs. Z on the sidewalk. Why do you think Buddy ran, I asked. Well, we used to live on a farm in the country, she said. There was a lot of open space for him to run, and Buddy forgets that he lives in a neighborhood now. The park has lots of open space, I said. Let's start looking there. Dad said he could help. We hurried in that direction and called Buddy's name. Here's the picture. There's the farm Buddy used to live on in the country. And here they are headed out. This little bubble up here says, neighborhoods in the city have many buildings and houses, but rural mm, neighborhoods in the country have fewer buildings and fewer people. Remember our signals for rural? Rural, lots of space, lots of land. So that's kind of what Buddy is thinking about. He had more space than here. Chapter two, searching the neighborhood. My best friend lives in an apartment by the park. I ran up the steps and rang the buzzer. Elena, can you come help us find Buddy? Apartment buildings have different homes and families under one roof. Some city neighborhoods have many apartment buildings. I bet some of you live in an apartment building. I kind of live in an apartment building. It has many people in different buildings all in under one roof. Here's the next picture. Mr. Roberts was waiting at the bus stop and heard us calling Buddy. A dog was barking over there. He pointed up at the hill at the school. I'll help you search. My shopping can wait. Wow, that's super kind of Mr. Roberts. If you can hear in the background, that's my dog eating his food. He decided now would be a great time to eat some breakfast. We'll cover more ground if we split up, Mr. Roberts said. He and Mrs. Z headed up the hill. The rest of us kept going toward the park. We passed a lemonade stand. The kids there said they hadn't seen Buddy. My babysitter Olivia was at the park playing basketball. We asked if she had seen a black and white dog running loose. I haven't, she said, but why don't you climb to the top of the slide? You'll be able to see farther. I'm noticing this neighborhood has some things that I have in my neighborhood and you probably have in yours. Apartments. On this page, I saw a school, a laundromat, a market. They went to a park. We didn't see Buddy, but we did see a worker high up in a bucket truck. She shook her head at our question. Sorry, kids. I haven't seen him, and when I'm up here, I can see all the way from Johnson Street to Park Street. There's the worker. Oh, there's a pizza restaurant, too. Big cities are known as urban areas. Remember the signal for urban? Tall buildings, lots of people. Urban neighborhoods have many people, buildings, and businesses often close together. Chapter three, new idea. Maybe we should hang a last, oh, uh, sorry, a lost dog sign somewhere, I said. Good idea, Dad answered. We can walk over to the coffee shop and leave one there. Here's this little bubble. Neighborhoods just outside of bigger cities are called suburbs. 
like suburban. These neighborhoods often have many homes, but few businesses. So as you can see, I see a library, a dentist, and maybe you've seen some polls like this in your neighborhood that have like events, lost cats, things for sale, wanted posters, like not like wanted, they're looking for a criminal, but wanted like we need help mowing our lawn or we offer dog walking services. We'd better go home and get paper and markers to make a sign, I said. We headed down a different block, still calling for Buddy. We met Mrs. Z and Mr. Roberts. I told them about our idea for a sign. I've got the perfect photo of Buddy we can add, said Mrs. Z. That's kind of like the apartment that I live in. It's not big, like this one, but it's still got more than one person living in the same building. Chapter four, surprise. Elena and I hurried around the corner onto our street and there was Buddy, sound asleep on Mrs. Z's front steps. Buddy's here, I called on to the others. He's safe. Look at that dog being so silly. He went out and had himself a good time and then came back and fell asleep. Mrs. Z told Dad we deserved a reward for helping, even though Buddy really found himself. We walked to the coffee shop with Buddy on his leash. Thanks, Mrs. Z, I said, and took a big bite of my treat. I didn't really need a reward. Dad says helping out is the neighborly thing to do. But this cupcake tastes pretty neighborly, too. So neighborly thing to do is what he said. That basically means it's being kind because being kind is the right thing to do. So like in the classroom, sharing, uh, asking kids to play with you, those are all the right thing to do. And so there are things in neighborhoods that are the right thing to do, like helping someone if they need it, looking for their dogs, or helping someone if they're struggling with groceries, maybe saying hi to someone. Those are all good things to do. This little bubble says, what is your neighborhood like? Are the houses and shops close together or are they far apart? We have talked about this a lot, so I know you can answer that question. Oh, and even on the back, they have this nice neighborhood map. Can you find Mrs. Z's house? Can you find Elena's apartment? Can you find the coffee shop? Can you find the park? What about Malik's house or the bus stop? Hmm. Well, I'm so glad we read this book because it made me remember all of the things we had been talking about in class about communities and neighborhoods. And I realized all of us are at home and we're in our very own neighborhoods. So one thing I want you to do is try and see, is there something neighborly you can do right now while reminding yourself of the social distancing we're supposed to do? Remember, you're supposed to be six feet away from people. And also, if your families do not want you outside, you need to listen. But is there something you can do to help your neighbors anyway? Maybe you smile at them if you see them while you're taking out your garbage. Or you wave at them as they're crossing the street. Maybe you ask your family if you can pick up trash around your building. And you do that for your other neighbors. There are lots of ways you could be neighborly. If you can't think of any ways to be neighborly to the people in your neighborhood, maybe you can do some things in your house. Maybe you can show some kindness to your parents and clean up something or organize something in the house or help them with cooking. Try doing some of those things to help get your mind off of being inside and being bored. All right. Mwah.